In this video, I'm talking about one of the roughest inner ear conditions called Meniere's disease. Coming up. Hi guys, Cliff Olson, doctor of audiology and founder of Applied Hearing Solutions in Phoenix, Arizona. And on this channel, I cover a bunch of hearing related information to help make you a better informed consumer. So if you're into that, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to click the bell to receive a notification every time I post a new video. At some point in your life, you have likely experienced dizziness. Now, there are a variety of different things that can cause the sensation of being dizzy, but one of the worst is a condition called Meniere's disease, because there are several other symptoms that you experience along with the dizziness that make it one of the most nasty inner ear conditions that you can experience. According to the U.S. National Library of Medicine, Meniere's disease affects over 600,000 individuals in the United States alone, with an additional 45,000 individuals being diagnosed with Meniere's disease each year. If you've ever had vertigo, which is an episode of intense dizziness, combined with tinnitus, oral fullness or congestion, and fluctuating hearing loss, then you may actually have Meniere's disease. Meniere's disease usually only affects one ear, but it can progress to your other ear in time. And while the sensation of dizziness will eventually go away, you're usually left with a permanent hearing loss. So what causes Meniere's disease? Well, a lot of researchers believe that it's actually a buildup of fluid in the inner ear. And to understand exactly where this buildup is occurring, let's go ahead and take a look at the anatomy of a human ear. First, we have what is called the outer ear, which includes the pinna and the ear canal. Then we have the middle ear, which consists of the eardrum, the three bones of hearing, otherwise known as the ossicles, the eustachian tube, and the middle ear space. The inner ear consists of the cochlea, which is responsible for your hearing, and the semicircular canals, which are responsible for balance. Like I mentioned before, Meniere's disease is thought to be related to a buildup of fluid in your inner ear, which increases the pressure inside the inner ear. It is important to note that fluid buildup in the inner ear is different from fluid buildup in your middle ear space, which may be caused by an ear infection. This buildup of fluid in the inner ear causes a disruption in how the cochlea and vestibular system communicate with your brain, which is why you typically have symptoms that involve balance and hearing at the same time. In normal circumstances, your brain expects to receive similar information from both of your ears. It is this mismatch of signals between your affected ear and your not affected ear that causes you to feel dizzy. That being said, even though excessive fluid buildup in the inner ear may be causing Meniere's disease, researchers don't know 100% for sure if that's the only cause. Some believe it could also be linked to blood vessel constriction, viral infections, allergies, autoimmune conditions, or even genetic factors. Episodes of Meniere's disease may be triggered by being tired, emotional distress, dietary factors like too much caffeine or too much sodium, or even just stress in general. These Meniere's attacks can occur at random, sometimes with several episodes in a very short period of time of each other, and then in other cases it can be months in between attacks. Meniere's disease is often diagnosed by an ear, nose, and throat physician. It can occur at any age, but in most cases it affects individuals between the ages of 40 and 50 years old. Since there is no gold standard test to diagnose Meniere's disease, physicians typically look at your medical history to identify symptoms such as two or more episodes of vertigo lasting 20 minutes apiece, an onset of roaring tinnitus, hearing loss in the low frequency range, which gives the perception of volume loss, and the feeling of ear fullness. Your physician will likely order some additional testing as well to support the diagnosis, which may include a hearing test, vestibular or balance testing, and even an MRI or CT scan to rule out other possible medical conditions. When it comes to treating the dizzy symptoms that are associated with Meniere's disease, individuals typically rely on medications, dietary changes, and vestibular therapy. Some of the common medications that your physician may prescribe can include meclizine, diazepam, or lorazepam to reduce the effects of dizziness, nausea, and anxiety, and even a diuretic to reduce fluid buildup in the inner ear. Dietary modifications can include reducing the intake of salt, chocolate, caffeine, and alcohol, which can all trigger a Meniere's attack. You may also be able to benefit from vestibular rehabilitation, which has to be administered by a specially trained physical therapist. The hearing loss and tinnitus symptoms that you experience with Meniere's disease can often be successfully treated with hearing aids by an audiologist. Now, you don't need me to tell you that Meniere's disease is no joke. So if you end up experiencing dizziness along with tinnitus, ear fullness, and hearing loss, then you have to get a hold of your physician right away so you can end up starting treatment as soon as possible. 
That's it for this video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. If you like the video, please share it. If you want to see other videos just like this one, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Also, feel free to check out my website, drcliffaud.com.